So this fertilized ACL is a perfect point, but you want the graft to heal to the bone faster. So it depends on the graft option. You've got patella tendon, which is bone. So that'll heal versus mm. other tendon options, which is what the fertilized ACL is. And then remember, you're taking a tendon out, which is a tendon is a bone to muscle attachment. So you've got the hamstring tendon, you have the quad tendon. There's a few other options too, but you're putting in, you want to make it into a ligament. So a ligament is where it's attached to bone on both sides. And so it's got to go a process where it goes ligamentization, where yeah. it basically turns into a ligament. And then you want to make sure it doesn't tear as it's getting bigger and better. And so the idea is that if you can make it heal faster and you can make it remodel faster and you can keep it safe and stable, then you've come up with the perfect solution. And so the idea behind this fertilize HCL, which we've heard about it, you actually interviewed, we talked about it and then actually was a couple of years ago. And then Chad Lavender reached out to you yep. and you had a whole topic with him. And so, you know, maybe we'll have you be a great guest to have on at some point now. Yeah. Campus, yeah. Adam uh, Marshall, you game. know, he's, yeah, he's a, yeah, and, and he's a sports guy too. So it, it'll be interesting. Uh, you know, maybe he might be a good one for the fall as we get into football season. He'll for be sure. For sure. I think I added him to the list. This would be yeah, great. Yeah. So typical ACL nine months to a year to get back. And so what, uh, Dr. Lavender, Chad Lavender has done is something called the fertilized ACL. And actually my, um, my uh, patient asked about this. It's called a, for Arthrex company itself. It's called bio ACL. It's the same basic principle. And so what they do is they take PRP or your own blood and they put it with, you know, uh, allograft bone. It's called mineral bone. Tick. So the hope, the key is to hopefully it's a conduit. So it's like squ- soaks it up and then they inject it into the tunnels and then they can take some of your own bone. So they have this, this device that as you shave, it sucks bone up and it filters it. Imagine like a, um, a pool filter, And so the bones all mixed up there. It's your own bone with some other bone and then the PRP. And then you can inject it in the tunnels and the whole, and what he is trying to show is that patients will get the bone to bone healing, bone to tendon healing faster. And then potentially the ligament is faster. And so therefore they can get back faster. So he has looked at some studies and shown some patients that have gotten back at six months with this. Now the, the caveat, which if you look at the studies and I know, we've done some of these is he's had some trials where he's had really good results, but some of the trials, not all the patients came back for the follow-up. And so you've got to be a little careful, right? Because who's the most likely patient not to come back to a follow-up? I don't know. Would it be a young Probably person? someone who's not happy, right? If you're oh, going to get called and all of a sudden in yeah. two years. Yeah. So I'm not, it's not that his data is not accurate. I totally, I, I think it's awesome what he's doing. I'm, yeah. I'm all for it. And I think it's legitimate, but the, you know, if you, when you start losing follow-up at two to three years, you have to be say, Hey, listen, is this, is this, uh, is, are all of these patients, did you lose follow-up because they left the state and that's totally legitimate. And that happens all the time. Like there's, it's really hard to find if you're doing surgeon people and they're flying in for surgery that they're going to call you back or listen to pick up the yeah, phone. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't mean that yeah. you just have to have a little bit of a healthy bias or healthy skepticism and say, Hey, listen, this is pretty awesome what they're doing. They are getting patients back. I mean, I've seen promos for this. Uh, you know, it's pretty impressive. And these patients, you know, we talked about this, their, their return to sport function, they're 80% of normal compared to 35% for regular ACL, yeah. their functional tests, they're 80% of the 30%. Um, and their CT scans, which is cat scan, where you look at bone show that they had less tunnel widening and they're already starting to form bone around the quad tendon now again this is only for one type of acl which is quad which is we take a piece of your quad it's not for patella tendon and it's not for hamstring which are actually way more commonly done acls and so it's something to be aware of too it's only been tested on one type of acl 